so pleased to have at the table Martha Link Walsh. Welcome. Thank you. I'm a happy self, to be here. A self-taught artist. Self-taught artist, yes. You, I'm going to call you a paper cutter. That's what I am. And you intricately cut paper. And this reminded me of when I was a little kid and we all had silhouettes. There were four of us. I was the oldest of four. And they were in black and they were framed on the wall. You say that's the hardest thing to do. Silhouettes are are really hard. If, if you get a, f a fraction, a millimeter off the shape of the nose, you have a whole new person. Right, it doesn't look like the child. No. I want you to hold this up so that we can see this. This is an example of what you do with paper cutting. Right. It's, Why did you start doing this? This looks so tedious, so intricate. It's really very relaxing. It is? The designing is hard, Yeah. but the cutting is the reward. Cutting is really, really fun because there's always things going, cutting away and falling apart, and you're seeing it evolve. That would drive me crazy, I have to tell you. You use these little bitty scissors. These, these scissors I used for the first 15 years. That's all I used. And then one summer it was so humid that the paper absorbed the water from the air and it wouldn't cut the paper. So ah. then I started using a scalpel. So now I use both. So you're at home just these tiny little cutouts. I started at home, but I had a gallery and studio for... In Brantford, we should say, for Brantford. 40 years. Yes. You also make these. Yes. Which are ornaments. And those take more time to get in the little ornament in the ball than it so does you have to, to be, cut them. you have them. to be really careful. I'm going to let you hold that okay. up. Okay. So w once you cut that out... You cut it out, and then you put the string on it, and then you get it inside, and then attach it to the top, and then... It can swing and then inside. it can move about. Yeah. Let's talk about how you became an artist. You grew up in Brantford. How did that happen? I grew up in Brantford and then I went away to college and was a math major and I was a middle school math teacher. My first year I was sent home at Thanksgiving with mono and hepatitis and I couldn't read or watch TV because it had affected my eyesight. But you just you're bored. You can't do anything. But So you start cutting paper? So my mom gave me a pair of scissors and paper and said, here, why don't you play with this? And now this has lasted 40 years, you cutting paper. Yes. Let's take a look. We have um, eight or nine photos of what you've done over the years. Tell me about this one. Oh, this one was for a new baby, Daniela. And did you design all of this? Yes. And then put the name in there? Yes. And it's all one piece. So it's all connected just like this one is all one piece. How intricate is that? And this customer wanted it to be fun and playful and, and so we picked an animal or bird for each letter uh -huh. and then I cut it out and framed it. The next one. All right, you got kind of colorful and this is in your latest book. You, you have two books, we should say. Yes. And you got kind of colorful in, is this folk art paper cutting? Describe what this is. I, I think of it more as folk art. Um, there's a long Polish tradition of paper cutting and they, had, they do layers of colored paper. Um, it's much freer, it's much more spontaneous, it's looser, it's... And it's not so intricate. It's nowhere near <laughs> as intricate, but it's harder for me to do than this. Really? Yeah. With these, you know what you're gonna get pretty much uh -huh. by the time you're finished. With these, I mean, that one I must have had 15 versions of it until I was happy with it. You were not afraid of just hard, tedious work and stay. It's fun. It's fun. See, for me, I'd have to write a story and then just move on. Oh, no, Look no, no, at fun. the intricacy in this. Well, this is the partridge in the pear tree. So that's the cutting that's all one piece in the book. Uh -huh. And then the one before that was the colored version that's also in the book. It's amazing. Now what does your d family say to you as you're sitting there for hours cutting out these little lacy flowers? Um, it's just mom? Yeah, I mean it's just glad you're happy. What do you gain from doing this art as we look at more of your photos? Well, I get personal satisfaction from it, but I also have been very, very lucky to have a lot of wonderfully loyal customers um, I get to be part of the family events, weddings, babies, retirements. And this is an heirloom, what we're seeing right here. This is for a couple that you did. Yes. Did they say to you, we want you to frame our photo 
and you just came up with this? Well, they had the photograph, and, and so we, I talked about where was the wedding, what was unique about the wedding itself, location or theme or whatever, and we decided to do the beach roses around that one. That's so amazing. they're all different, and the, the roses mean love and friendship, and the violets mean happiness. Wow, so you, you do some research on that as well. Yes. That's yes. good. All right, let's look at the next one. We have a goose here, I would think. Oh, that's, that's <coughs> excuse me, the goose from the book as well. That's the goose laying. Uh -huh. And there's a couple eggs that you can see on the inside. And that, that's, again, all one piece. Have you ever surprised yourself at what you come up with? All the time. Tell me about that. Well, when I look back at some of the cuttings that I've done, I can't believe I did it. That it was as elaborate. Oh, here's Speaking one. Speaking of elaborate, <laughs> here's one. This was a retirement gift for um, someone in Brantford that had volunteered her whole life in town, and this represented all the things that she was a part of in Brantford. You're telling a story with this. What yes. are some of the symbols here? I see a cross. Um, there were all the organizations. The center is the logo. Well, a takeoff from the logo of, of the town, which I did, which is great. It's on all the fire engines and police stations, police cars. Um, so that's a takeoff um, in the center. And then she worked for the Red Cross and the Brantford Land Trust. And I see the, the state y. of Connecticut. I yeah. see uh, a sailboat. And then there's her children are represented there and her grandchildren are represented there. So did you interview her, get some ideas, and then you just started, you no, sketched she, it? No, she was getting this as a gift. So I got oh. the information from someone who was in the group that was presenting it to her. So you sketched it and then just started cutting. Right. right. Wow. Right. All right, let's look at the next one. Oh, this one. This is tiny. This so one, tiny. I, actually, this is this is like one of one of the ones in the upper left corner. And what was this um, for? It's a this patch, was for Valentine's patch? Day, uh -huh. and all the birds and the flowers represent an aspect of love and friendship. You're getting very deep, Martha. I <laughs> love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's all very symbolic. The lovebirds are there in the relationship area, and then, you know. It, 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 it all works together. Yes. What's this based on? Um, this one is the Lord Leaping, so that's also in the book. A paper cut Christmas, the 12 days of Christmas, yes. and the paper cut Christmas legend of the gift giver. So those are your two books. Those are the two books. Can we find yeah. those on Amazon? Yes, you can. Okay, good. Yes. There's a commercial. And we have another picture, I think. Tell me about this um, one. This, uh, most of what I do is the one piece of paper. So when I have a chance to do some of the color I force myself to do it because it makes me stretch a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I have a thing about poppies, so I decided to do a woman with poppies, and that's the one I came up with. How do you teach this to somebody? Because you see it first, you sketch it first, you start cutting. It seems to me that this is a lost art. Not a lot of folks are doing this. When I started doing it, I only knew of one person that did it in this country. Uh, it's a, you know, it's started in China, it was done in Japan, in Poland, in Switzerland, in France. There's been traditions all around the world. Um, it was lost for a while, but now it's being taught in art schools. Everything I mean, everybody's old doing is it new now. again, right? Yeah, What definitely. speaks to you about this kind of art? You've been doing it for so long, maybe you don't even know the answer to that. But is it in giving the gift? It's it's it, it's the meaning of the gift. It's hand done. It's it's created for a person or for an event in someone's life or for an occasion. It, it's tradition. Over it, forty it, years, what have you learned from your customers? Uh, they're so they're so loyal and so giving and so appreciative that I, I couldn't do anything else. Are you thinking about branching out at all? You've written two books, which is great. You do ornaments, you do framed items. Is there anything you've tried to start out to do that you haven't finished yet that you want to do? None of it has been conscious from the beginning. I, I just, Tell me about that. I, what does that mean? I just started cutting for something to pass the time, and then 
later on when I came home from Europe I had a few months before I could get another teaching job so I started cutting again for something to fill the time and then I started getting people coming in saying well you cut my German Shepherd and oh okay I have to learn how to draw a German Shepherd and people started asking me to do things and they're the ones that taught me how to do it really and it's just sort of evolved it's not been a, a for 40 a years it's thing. evolved yes and still is I when, never thought I'd do you it never walk. thought you would be a paper cutter no but you are is this an art that should stay alive and if so why Uh, probably just because of tr it can go anywhere. Oh, there's so many things that are being done with it now. Like? Uh, the, there's a museum in New York, um, Museum of Decorative Arts, I think it's called. It used to be a folk art museum. And they had an exhibit on paper cutting a couple of years ago. And you walked in the lobby and you looked up and the entire ceiling was a scene of a shipwreck in cardboard coming out of the ceiling. It was all cut paper. So then you got inspired again. I, I alternate between inspiration and <laughs> intimidation. Because um, well, I, I mean, I couldn't even think of that, let alone create it. But to see it is amazing. Well, create it you have. And Martha, thank you so much for coming on and showing us your beautiful designs. Thank you for having me. I've You're enjoyed welcome. it. Spend all night kissing and a bump is right here, then who else is missing? Got a little sidetrack to find my solution. I find the keys to the door, but it's also a metaphor. Things keep on to the grocery store, but mine, just the same time. I skip right ahead to the last ride. The harder we look, the less we can see. Don't you know, you know, you know that you need me.